In this video, I'm going to take a look at this E55 AMG wagon, S211, and go through some of the unique aspects of the E55 wagon. Thanks to Winding Road Motor Cars in Langley, British Columbia, for inviting me to have a look at their E55 wagon. I'll leave a link below to their website for more details. The wagon version of the E55 was first produced in September 2003, which is about one year after the sedan started production. This particular car is a 2005 model that was built in June of 2004. This car was recently imported to Canada from Japan, as these cars were very sought after in the Japanese market back in the day. However, this E55 wagon was actually originally ordered from Abu Dhabi, and at some point made it to Japan. You can tell it's not originally a Japan market car, because it has the trunk panel with the opening for the long license plate you would have in Abu Dhabi or in Europe. Also, the markings and warning stickers are in English. The E55 wagon was added to the US market for 2005 and 2006. They originally sold 215 units in the US. Also, the E55 was originally sold in Canada as well, and it's believed that 8 units were sold here. Compared to North American E55s, this car has power folding mirrors, and no amber markers on the front bumper. Inside the car is quite similar to a North American model, other than having a solid armrest and a compartment in the trunk for the warning triangle. Under the hood we have the M113K supercharged V8, rated at 469 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque, and it's paired with a 5-speed automatic transmission. The wagon weighs in at 4,387 pounds, compared to the sedan which weighs 4,045 pounds. So the weight difference is more than 300 pounds. In terms of production numbers, they made 1,444 wagons in total, compared to 12,993 sedans. So the wagon version is much rarer. The wagon really drives a lot like the sedan, just with some extra weight which you might feel in the corners. Although, the added weight is mostly over the rear axle, so the wagon is known to have better traction off the line compared to the sedan. Back in the day, the wagon was rated to cross the quarter mile in 12.3 seconds by Motor Trend magazine, while the sedan was 12.4 seconds, according to them. So in the real world, there's not much of a compromise with the wagon. However, there are a lot of practical benefits to the wagon. Trunk space is the big gain over the sedan. The volume is much greater with the wagon and you can bring tall items with you. Making this car even more practical than the sedan is that you can fold the rear seats in the wagon. You cannot fold the rear seats in the E55 sedan. So this car would be ideal for the IKEA run while the sedan isn't very good. You also have lots of additional storage room underneath the trunk floor. And another difference to mention is that you can't get the panoramic roof on the wagon, only the sedan. This particular example is finished in obsidian black metallic with black Napa leather inside. In terms of options, this car is equipped with the curve illuminating xenon lights the Parktronic parking sensors, keyless go push button start, heated rear seats, which is interesting for an Abu Dhabi ordered car, climate comfort front seats, 
And finally, a fire extinguisher under the driver's seat, but I forgot to grab a clip. It looks like this. For the wagon layout in the trunk, there are a few different configurations that were offered by Mercedes. This particular car has the trunk rail system, which you could connect storage racks along the two rails to help keep things organized and from moving around. Another option that you could get on the wagon was the rear-facing third row of seats. The 211 was the last generation where you could spec the third row of seats on the AMG models. It's not ideal for adults, but it's still very cool. There was also an electrohydraulic trunk floor that you could get, which would extend out of the car and make it easier to load, but I believe that this was very rare. You could also get a power-operated tailgate as well. I think that the wagon version of the 211 was very well done, as it's a well-proportioned car. The E55 wagon is one of my favorites, because it has so much going for it. It's a rare car that's fast and very usable. The trunk space is massive. Wagons have also become a huge deal with car enthusiasts in recent years in North America. AMG was always selling wagons for almost 20 years here. But more recently, Audi joined the party with the RS6, reflecting that wagons are getting more important. It just makes sense because these cars don't compromise as much as performance SUVs do. This particular E55 is a very clean example with just under 91,000 kilometers, which is not much at all for an E55. These imported E55s are really a great value in my opinion because they are less expensive than the original North American delivered cars, at least for buyers in Canada. Once these cars become 25 years old and can easily move to the US, I think their values will get a sizable bump. The S211 wagon continued with the E63 that replaced the E55. It was even more rare, with only 726 made in total. I've already compared the E55 and the E63 as well as their engines, and I'll leave links to those videos in the description. I hope you enjoyed this quick look at the E55 wagon. If you want to support the channel, take a look at my store. Link is in the description. If you want to see more Mercedes and AMG content, subscribe for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching.